Put your hand on your Bible. Say, this is God's holy word. I know it's inspired. Holy men of all wrote, moved upon by the Holy Spirit. And tonight the Holy Spirit's going to move on us. This is our breakthrough night. Truly breakthrough night. Amen. In Jesus' name. Okay, I just thought tonight, you know, how some, sometimes in our lives, and, you know, I see it like this. There's like a wall of resistance. And it's like you can't get to the other side to get what your promises says. You pray and you pray, but it is a wall that's standing against you all the time, and you need a breakthrough. Okay, so we need a breakthrough to get to our, call it promises, okay? Sorry for the pain, promises. And then sometimes it's not like a wall. It's like you're standing here, let's do another picture on another page. You're standing here and there's like a gap. If somebody can try and understand, it's like you see it, but it's like you just can't get to the other side. It's like there's a gap. The Bible would call it many times a breach. Okay, so you're standing here and you're standing here and you need to close that gap. You need someone to just come and put that thing together and that bam, that that distance will be just taken out of the way and there will be a straight line and there's your promises and you write into it. No more gaps, no more walls of resistances, no more breaches in between. You've got to close that gap. You need to get to your promises. And I believe today that this is not just another message. Whatever's going to come out, God has said to me, today you're going to speak on getting out of your trouble getting out of your situations, getting into your promises, getting into what God has promised you, getting what God has put on the other side of that wall of resistance, on the other side of that gap, on the other side of that breach. We're going to close it today and bam, all of a sudden, the distance, the delay, the time exposure, everything will just be... Here's your line. You're standing here on this side. On this side is your promises. We need that thing today to... close up and you got to bam into everything. The stuff is going to happen. The stuff is going to sell. The promise is going to be there. The healing is going to be there. The house is going to be sold. The car is going to be bought. The deals are going to be signed. It's just funny. No more delay. No more. No more. No more delay. Okay, so uh, uh, I thought maybe I should uh, maybe should I, you are there. Let's go to Joel 2 quickly. Mm. It's just two, big, two books back. Joel chapter 2. I think that'll that'll be a good chapter too. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Remember, Johan sang that old song last night. For the Lord is marching on and his army is ever strong. Okay. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? In other words, God's going to run in front of us. God's going to break through for us, and nobody's going to be able to stop us. Remember when God spoke to Joshua and said, Nothing shall be able to stand against you. No man shall be able to stand against you. But every place that your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Come on, say it, scream it nothing's going to be able to stand against you you're going to inherit your promises you're going to take your promises today the gap the breach is going to be bam closed you're going to step right into it. that time delay is going to be taken out now listen to verse 13 man this is a cool scripture the breaker brackets amplified the messiah will go up before them i mean where's that joe where's where's that joe man where's that joe thing where's that joe thing hmm? Mm. Come, Bible, turn. Where's that Joel thing? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? 2.13, Micah. The breaker, the Messiah, will go up before them. Then they will break through. They will pass in through the gate. Come on, remember Psalm 118, open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter in. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Send now, Lord, send now prosperity. Send now salvation. Say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, yes. 
they will break through, pass in through the gate and go out through it. Now remember, this is talking about the cross of Christ if you listen to Psalm 118. And, oh, and their king will pass on before them the Lord at their head. Man, I mean, you can't get it better. There is our breaker, the Messiah, our King, our Lord. He's for us. He's beside us. He's marching ahead of us. He's covering our backside. He's doing everything to make sure that you're going to break through. And he's, and in this sense, our Lord is called. Now, when we were young, that wasn't a good word. But today, he was called. <laughs> Come on, anybody in the house. <laughs> In this sense, he's called the breaker. Breaker, we love you. It's like St. Patrick's prayer. I just had them get one in the bookshop. He says, today I'll put on a terrible strength. Invoking the Trinity, confessing the three with faith in the one as I face my maker. Today I put on the power of Christ's birth and baptism. His hanging and burial, his resurrection, ascension, descending to my reward. Patriarchs, prayers, prophets, predictions, apostles, precepts, confessors, testimony, holy virgins, innocence, and the deeds of true men. Today I put on the power of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the fierceness of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the death of the sea, the firmness of the earth, and the hardness of rock. Today I put on God's strength to steer me, God's power to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye for my vision, God's ear for my hearing, God's word for my speech, God's hand to protect me, God's pathway before me, God's shield for my shelter, God's angels to guard me from ambush of devils, from vices allurements, from traps of the flesh, from all who wish ill wherever distant or close, alone or in host. I summon these powers today to take my part against every impeccable power that attacks my body and soul, the chance of false prophets, dark law of the pagans, false heretics, laws, and Trappings of women or smiths or druids and all knowledge that poisons man's body or soul. Christ guard me today from poison, from burning, from drowning, from hurt that I have my reward. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ within me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right hand. Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down. Christ when I sit. Christ when I rise. Christ in every heart to think of me. Christ in my mouth of all who speak of me. Christ in every eye that see me. Christ in every ear that hears me. Today I put on the terrible strength, invoking the Trinity, confessing the three with faith in the one as I face my maker. Mm -hmm. Listen to Psalm 20, okay? Say, the Lord's going to break through. I'm going to break through with him. The Lord is my breaker. Nothing's going to stand in front of me. Nothing's going to withhold it. Nothing's going to hinder it. The gap's going to be closed today. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. I'm preaching to you. The Lord hear you in the day of trouble. I, I, I'm preaching to you. The Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send you help from the sanctuary. Strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your sacrifice. Grant thee according to your own heart and fulfill all your counsel. I'm preaching to you. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all your petitions. I'm preaching to you. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call the king, the Lord. Our breaker is going before us. He's beside us. He's breaking through for us. And they will break through and nothing will stop them from closing the bridge today.
same from here to there. No more delay. We're going to step into what God has for us. This word is true. God cannot fail us. God cannot lie to us. God will perform his word. God watches over his word. The word will not return unto him void. So shall my word be. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. Forever, O God, your word is settled in the heavens. Let your word break through today in Jesus' name. Psalm 46, I wish I can also read the whole one, but let's just do the first three verses. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I hope you see that every time he's, he says he's going to deliver you out of trouble, he's a present help in time of trouble, say, say uh, tr- trouble is not my portion. Today, trouble is stopping in my life. I'm fed up with being fed up. I'm fed up with having trouble. Trouble is not my portion. Nothing will trouble me anymore. Trouble, sentence is being spoken over you. This is your last day in my life. Come on, you've got to work with because otherwise you're going to miss it. Trouble, this is the last day that you are mentioned in my life. If you're looking for trouble, <laughs> the green eye wants the right. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, O oh man, will not we fear? Though the earth be removed, (laughs) though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Stop and think for a moment. If this whole earth be removed, if every mountain just vanish, if the sea just disappear, God says, I'm going to deliver you out of trouble. I'm a present help in time of trouble. No matter how it looks around you, no matter if it's earthquakes, tsunamis, you're going to stand and I'm going to deliver you out of trouble. Who are we talking about? Who are we trusting in? God says, I'm going to deliver you out of trouble. I'm going to be a present help in time of trouble. I mean, call it what you will. Let's call it trouble today. The stuff that's troubling you, the trouble that's the stuff that's messing up your mind, the stuff that is making you to be anxious, to be weary, to be, you know, worried, to be filled with stress, to be filled with cares. Let's call it and give it a name, trouble. For those who have any imagination, no more trouble, no entrance. Be removed. Let's go to a very well-known Psalm, Psalm 91. Man, man, man. Now, Psalm 91, I mean, it must be a favorite to everybody. Now, you know, we've got so many stickers. This house is protected by Psalm 91. This car is protected by Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High and stuff like that. But the word comes in Deuteronomy 30 and Romans 10 and says, the word is near you, even in your mouth to speak it. So sometimes we've got to take this word and speak it out. Now, this word says, he that dwelleth there, I will say of the Lord, verse 2, my refuge, my fortress, my God, him will I trust. Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noise of the He shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings thou shalt trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler come on this is not just another psalm this is the word of the Lord for you today you shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day man if I read the scriptures I gotta go to my favorite oh, you know, you know, everything is your favorite quiz. <laughs> okay he says in righteousness shall you be established thou shall be far from oppression you shall not fear far from terror it shall not come near you no weapon formed against you shall prosper every tongue that shall rise in judgment against you shall condemn this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord the righteousness of me Isaiah 15 54, back in Psalm 91. Oh, you shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted noonday. Thousands shall fall at thy side, ten thousand are right, and it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you see and behold, because you have made the Lord. Ah, there shall no evil befall you. There is no any plague come near your dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all the way. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You 
shall tread upon the lion and the adder. Oh man, the devil, your adversary, walk about like a roaring lion seeking him and made of hour. But you must resist him steadfast in the faith, submitting yourself to the way of the Lord. Come on, man. You shall tread upon them because he has loved me. Oh, come on. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Here comes our scripture. He shall call upon me. I will deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Come and say, God's going to be with me in trouble. He's going to deliver me. He's going to make a way for me out of trouble this night. This very night, I'm coming out of trouble. Trouble, sentence has been served on you tonight. Psalm 20, Psalm 46, Psalm 91. God is my refuge. God is my strength. In trouble, He's with me, and He's going to deliver me this very night. Tell somebody, did you hear that? He spoke to me. Come on, tell somebody, He spoke to me. Come on, He spoke to me. Isaiah 30, let's go. We're going to run through the word, man. Listen to verse 26. Moreover, hoo 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 ha ha ha. I know it's coming, that's why I'm hoo hoo ha ha. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. I mean, I'm talking prophetically. You got a year with a prophetic year. Don't look at the moon and the sun. You got a year with a prophetic year now. What God is saying to you concerning your life, your home, your business, your marriage, your ministry, your finances, your children. The light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. The light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In the day that the Lord, listen to this, bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wounds. Woo! Woo Woo-hoo! 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 (laughs) There's the breach. You know what it is? Oh, I don't know what's happening with my pain again tonight. There's the gap. The day that the Lord. Taketh that breach away. It'll be like the moon will be like the sun, man. It'll be like the sun would be like seven days light. The day when God binds up your wound and the day, what does he say? When God, when God bindeth up that breach, bam, and healeth the wound. Oh man, this is the day. Let us enter through that gate of righteousness. This is the day that the Lord has made. Send now, Lord, send now prosperity. Send now salvation. This is the day, let us enter through that gate. Come on, speak in tongues, man. Come on, we heard it. Powerful. Come on. I take it. Let's read on. Let's read on. Let's read on. Verse 28. His breath. Oh, come on, say breath. As an overflowing stream, say it. His breath as an. Imagine God's breath. Like an overflowing stream. Have you seen rivers in flood? Now imagine God's breath like an overflowing stream. When God breathes, there's an overflowing stream coming. I will make a way out of the wilderness. I will break forth rivers in the desert, streams in the wilderness. Man shall reach to the midst of the neck. Verse 29. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept. The gladness of heart, and when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel, and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice. Remember Joel 2? The Lord's voice is uttered before his army. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lightning down of his arm. In other words, when God stretches out his arm, the lightning, which is the angels, according to Ezekiel, when God stretches out his arm, 
Remember how many times he says his arm helped him? Lightning. In other words, angels. Bam, 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 bam. Come on. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Are the angels not all ministering spirits sent out to minister on behalf of those who are to be heirs of salvation? Psalm 104. He makes his angels, his ministers, flames of fire. Ezekiel, lightning, bolts, thunder. Para, para, bam. Holy angels. Come on, say, come angels, come. It's time to minister for me. I command my angels to work. Hmm? Wow. Glory, 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 glory. I don't know what to say, man. There's too much. Let's do 59. Let's do 59. That's good enough. Oh, this is going to be cool. Yeah, it'll help. But this Bible doesn't say it like that, but we're going to get it in any case. And he saw that there was no man, verse 16. He saw that there was no man, and he wondered that there was no intercessor. Now, you'll get it in some Bibles. He said, there was no man to stand in the gap. And he says it in Ezekiel like that. Okay? Okay? Hey, hey, hey. There was no man. He saw that there was no man to stand in that gap. Now remember what God says he's going to close it for us. I wonder if anybody is here in this house. But I'm taking it for myself tonight that God, the almighty Jesus Christ, creator of heaven and earth, the word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us, is going to take every breach in my life tonight, in your life tonight, and he's going to, bam, and he's going to cut it out. And we're going to step into what God has promised us. Life, healing, power, presence, prosperity, peace, joy, happiness, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. And he wondered that there was no intercessor, no one to intervene on behalf of truth and right. Therefore, here it comes, his own arm brought him victory. Now remember, when his arm stretched out, what's coming? What's coming? Lightnings. What's the lightnings? angels. So if you see God's arm in the Bible, immediately you know when that arm is coming, wham, 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 wham. Now remember Revelation talks about 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels. So they took that, put it in a computer for the computer guys, just go to Revelation and this is what they found. If you divide those angels amongst all the people on the face of the earth now, every person has 20,000 angels. Now listen to this. The psalm writer says, God rides on 20,000 angels. In other words, God knew in 2011, he's going to ride and stretch out his arm and 20,000 angels at your disposal to work and operate for you. Angels, you're welcome. Come work, come operate. Come on, angels. Hmm? Oh man, his own arm brought him victory, his own righteousness, having the spirit without measure. For the Lord put on righteousness as a breastplate or coat of mail and salvation as a helmet upon his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing. Verse 19. Okay, now remember what we just read in Isaiah 30. His breath, like an overflowing stream, is going to bring us that breakthrough. He's going to close that gap. He's going to close that breach. He's going to heal that wound. Okay? Now listen. So, as the result of Messiah's intervention, they, whoa, they shall reverently fear the name of the Lord from the west, His glory from the rising of the sun. For when the enemy shall come in like a flood, The Spirit, wait a bit, wait a bit, wait till we finish. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, put him to flight, for he will come like a rushing stream, which the breath of the Lord dries. Have you ever seen a real flood and a river coming down? Nothing stands in that way. Just pushes everything out of the way. He says the breath of the Lord. I mean, God is... 
The Bible says, at the breath of his nostrils, he divided the Red Sea. The breath of the Lord. And Adam stood up a living soul. The breath of Jesus. And 11 disciples went out in power. The breath of the Lord. The arm of the Lord. God says, holy angels, an overflowing stream, and every enemy is taken out of the way. Come on, put your hands up. I take that. I take that. I take that. Come on. I take that. I take that. I take that. Come on, get. You don't change and become like little children. You will in no wise end. I take that. Look at just the opposite page. Look at just the opposite page. Verse 11 of 58. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. Make fat your bones and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places and you shall raise up foundations of many generations. Here it comes. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. In other words, there will be no potholes. That gap's going to be taken out of the way. The path is going to be straight. You're going to bam, bam, wham, step right into what God has promised. No more delay. No more resistance. No more undermining. No more stopping it. No more hindering forces. No more opposing forces. Man, the breakthrough of the Lord God Almighty. Our breaker, our king is going ahead of us, beside us, behind us, above us, beneath us. Christ behind me. Christ before me. Christ on my left. Christ on my right, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I rise up, Christ! I'm doing my best. I think that same scripture, we can pick it up in Amos 9, I think that'll be good. You know where Amos is? In the cloud. Okay. Go to Amos. Verse 11, Amos chapter 9. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is falling. Now you know the tabernacle of David is mercy and grace. It's not worship. Worship comes from Miriam with the tambourine rock around the Red Sea, remember? (laughs) God's people always worshiping. Listen. And close up the breaches. Thereof, listen, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. What is that? Grace and mercy will be multiplied. What will happen then? Verse 13, let's do it in the Amplified. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drop sweet wine. All the hills shall melt. That is, every year too before barren and unfruitful shall overflow with spiritual blessings. Right. Now, now, to get this breakthrough, to get out of this trouble, to see all this stuff happening. I mean, this is awesome scriptures. You know, as... Uh, as, as from Genesis, man, you can start right in the beginning. And the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Abraham. And so the word of the Lord came all the time. But there was this little boy, Samuel, in First Jan- First Samuel, First Samuel, 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 First Samuel chapter 3. And it says, the word of the Lord was not yet revealed unto Samuel. And Samuel was not yet acquainted with the, and says, and the word of the Lord appeared. And revealed himself unto Samuel at Shiloh. The word of the Lord. I mean, what is this word? The word became flesh. In the beginning was this word and the word was with God. This is Jesus Christ revealing himself to Samuel. Hmm? 
Now, I wanted to do it right through the prophets as I'm sitting here, but that's going to take all night. So let's just do one, and that's Jonah. Jonah tonight. When last did you get a message out of Jonah? Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. Now, like I said, you can go right through Genesis. The word of the Lord came unto Abraham. Then you can go right through 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles, there back into Samuel. Then you can go through all the prophets. Amos, Obadiah, Hosea, Zephaniah, Zechariah. And every time, verse 1 or 3, it says, and the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. And every time they did what the word of the Lord said, and every time, a little bit further down, it'll say, and the Lord performed the word. And the Lord performed his word. You know, not just Jeremiah. And if you go through Jeremiah and Ezekiel, man, every second verse, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And the, Jeremiah, I mean, you, you're a lot late to think, is that all that Jeremiah can say? And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And the word, you must see it. Just go through your Bible and see it. Then you get to Ezekiel. You say, oh, goodness. And the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. And every time he just did, and every time, bam, 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 bam. Hmm? Hmm? Arise. Go to Nineveh. <laughs> Now, you'd be surprised how many times when the word of the Lord comes, he says, arise. Remember when, when, when Saul, you know, Paul, he was still Saul, you know, when he was angry, putting the church in prison, having letters from the high priest, you know, and, you know, bam, a light, you know, threw him off his horse. Mm. On his way to Damascus, from where? Paul of? Tarshish. Remember, Paul is from Tarshish, going to Damascus. He's going to bind the people up. Paul off. Paul off. Say it. Tarshish. Okay. You know, going to Damascus. He's going to, a bright light, bam, and a voice come to him. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. What would you have me do? Arise. Go to the street called straight and to be told you what to do. Arise, 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 arise. I mean, imagine God's word to us. Isaiah 52, arise, shake yourself. Come on, shake, arise, shake yourself. No, let's ar- arise. Shake yourself loose from the dust. What is dust? Religious trash that the Pharisees want to put on you. Arise, shake yourself loose from the dust. Hmm? It goes on. Arise and sit in a dignified place. Come on, sit down. Sit down. I'm sitting in a dignified place. Come on, think of Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of... Man, the whole Bible is full of this stuff, man. Amen. Are you ready for Jonah? Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. You know? But, but, <laughs> but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. I mean, Paul just came out of Tarshish. <laughs> Jonah is fleeing towards Tarshish, you know. From, can you be so dumb? I wish they were good words to use with adjectives in the church. But let's stick to dumb, stupid, and idiotic. How can you flee from the presence of the Lord? I mean, have you still got breath in your lungs? You'd be surprised how many Christians flee from the presence of the Lord daily. You'd be very surprised to know God is leading, guiding, directing. If you were here last night, and if you were not here, get the CD, the DVD, talking about hearing and discerning the voice of the Good Shepherd. Brother, he's talking daily. And if you don't listen, you're running away from his presence. Okay, let's read on. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Man, that's dumb. And went down to Joppa. Huh. I mean, went down to Joppa. If you can imagine the, the experience that Peter had in Joppa. Remember, he was praying on that rooftop. And there comes the sheep with all the animals. And the Lord says, you know, eat. And he says, I will not eat any unclean thing. And here God opens the door for Peter to go to the heathen nations, preach to the Italian guys, you know, and here they get saved. And I mean, the whole household speak in tongues. And Peter just up throws the whole Europe. Hmm? And he found a ship going to Tarshish. 
So he, listen to this, he paid the fare thereof. I'm trying you to just go with me. This guy is running from the presence of the Lord and he even pays the guys to take him away. Hmm? I mean, I, I, think, I think of Patrick, that Patrick's breastplate prayer, no, it's all right, that we read earlier on. This little guy, 16, captured by, you know, the Irish people in Britain, go to be sold as a slave in Ireland, and, you know, at the age of 20, you know, he met the Lord at 16, and for, at the age of 20, he was on this mountain, and here comes a voice. Patrick, your ship is waiting for you. He's not fleeing from the presence of the Lord. He's fleeing into. He had to go right across Ireland to the other side of Ireland. And there's a ship. The guys are busy busy boarding the ship. And he says, uh, I must go with you to Britain. They say, no, 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 no. You got to pay if you want to go on our ships. And he says, well, let's pray. The guy starts praying. And the owner of the ship says, hey, this could be an omen. You know, remember Jonah, if we don't take that guy on the ship, we're going to be in a storm. So let's rather take the guy on the ship. You know, went back, you know, and he came back to Ireland years later as the Bishop of Ireland, built 300 churches in 30 years. Destroyed every bondage, every idol worship, put his staff into Ireland. All the serpents and snakes just disappeared, ran into the sea. He went into the idol worshippers, pointed his fingers. The they statues just melted in front of him. I mean, the God of glory just appeared because of one man that's running to the presence of the Lord and his ship is paid for. This guy pays to run away from the presence of the Lord. Okay, I mustn't spend too much time there, but I just thought it's interesting if you read the Bible. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. I mean, I mean, don't you think there's stories like that in the New Testament? Remember Matthew 14 and Mark 4? Every time Jesus knew there was going to be a storm. And the one time he sent his disciples, the Bible says, deliberately into a storm. I mean, can Jesus do that? Yes, he wanted to prove himself. So he sat on the mountain and he checks them out. Oh, look at Peter. <laughs> look at Thomas, my goodness. Oh, James. John, I thought you were so full of love. Look at John, you know. And then Jesus couldn't take it anymore and he comes walking on the sea. They say, ghost. He says, no, it's I. Hmm? Okay, no response. All right. The other one, Jesus goes with him on the boat and he sleeps in the boat. So there comes a storm. Peter wakes him up and says, do you not care that we perish? So Jesus gets up and says, where's your faith? Peace, be still, bam. Who's this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? I mean, I mean, just, just get the pictures. You know, get parallels here tonight. And I know where I'm going, so just know it. And every man cried unto his God. It reminds me of 1 Kings 18. Remember Elijah there on the mountain? And those guys crying unto their gods, the Assyria and the the Baal priest, you know, from morning sacrifice till evening, said, cutting themselves, O Baal, O Baal, O Baal. The living Bible says, Elijah said, maybe he sits on a toilet and can't hear you. (laughs) The living Bible, I didn't translate it, it's there. Hmm? Hmm? And cast for their wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it. You know, remember in, in Acts 27, we had the same story. Paul's on that ship, and they're also casting stuff out to make the ship lighter. Okay? But you're going to see the difference between the two. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep, acting like Jesus. <laughs> Making like he's got nothing to do with the storm, the sucker. Okay, we forgive you, Jonah. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? <laughs> Sounds like cars, remember? Or Mac sleeping there on the road. <laughs> o sleeper, arise! I mean, this is the second time he's getting the same command, but this time from the shipmaster. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Arise, call upon your God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Huh? Doesn't it sound like, you know, there by Jesus style? 
And they said everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know who, for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said, then, then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? Man, this is cool. I, I'm a prophet. Hmm? Can you imagine? Is anybody hearing? This guy is running away from the presence of God. He's got a command to arise and go preach to Nineveh. And go sleeps in the boat. I mean, this is an anointed man of God, a prophet. Jesus calls him the prophet Jonah. We're going to come to it at the close of this meeting. Okay? And here it comes, and this guy says, um, Hey, sleeper. Hey, sleeper. <laughs> Sleeper, <laughs> yes. What's your occupation? <laughs> prophet. <laughs> Sleeping prophet. No. And whence comest thou? What is thy country? What people art thou? Man, there's a lot of questions. And he said unto them, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven, which has made the sea, listen to this, which has made the sea and the dry land. Remember, Patrick. Then, then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto you that the sea may be calm? And he said, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard. They didn't want to do it first. They rode harder. Come to land, but they could not for the sea rode and was temp tempestuous. This is a physical word. Against them. <laughs> Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish with this man's life. See? And lay not upon us this innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord <laughs> had prepared. Now remember, we just did last night. God has prepared things for us. Man that eye hath not seen and ear hath not heard, neither has come out because we love him. But God has prepared something else for this guy that didn't listen to what God was saying. God has prepared a great fish <laughs> to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Okay? Okay? Big, no, this is a flower bird. <laughs> How does a fish look? So I get. Better. Neither. Fish. Okay. God <laughs> commanded a big fish. To swallow up Jonah. Bam. Right. That's how much I can draw. Is that all right? This other stuff I can do. So? Okay, then Jonah prayed. <laughs> you would have too. <laughs> Then, we know where we're going. You remember the first portion of the meeting. We're going to get to it. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Lord Jesus Christ, fish. Hear me, Lord. Imagine. <laughs> and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly 
of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. I want to say if nobody hears what I'm talking about, I don't care how you missed God. I don't care where you failed God. I don't care where you grieved God in your life. God is saying tonight, I'm going to get you out of your trouble. We heard the Psalms. I cried unto the Lord in my trouble and he delivered me. So I'm reading all this to tell you, you don't have to feel bad. God is going to restore the tabernacle of David, going to close the breach and no matter what, there's going to be no more breach. No matter if it's your fault, your neighbor's fault, your finances fault, your wife's fault, God says, if you cry unto me, in the day of trouble I'm going to deliver you I'm going to bring you out I'm bringing grace and mercy multiplied no matter what and how it happened it's going to close the gap today Ah. Ah. I hope somebody's hearing I hope somebody's listening no matter how you got there Today, we're going to cry unto the Lord. No matter whose fault it is, there's going to be no more finger pointing because that gap is going to be... Oh, he doesn't want to close. He tried three times when it happened the last. (laughs) Let's try it again. That gap is going to be closed. I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm preaching to you. God says, you're going to come out of trouble. Today, 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 today. No. For thou hast cast me into the deep. In the midst of the seas, the flood compassed me about. All my billows, thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Okay, you can read that in I don't know how many Psalms. Then I said, I'm cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Now you can read that in a lot of Psalms. The Psalm writer said it over and over again. My soul is like this. I'm in the depths. I'm in this. I'm in this. I'm in that. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yes, there was brought my life corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Now listen, this guy is now saying total different stuff than was happening in the fish. He's preaching as a prophet to you. I hope somebody will understand the prophet of Jonah. Look intelligent. This guy is now preaching to you. He says, oh Lord, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. My prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the fish vomit out Jonah upon the dry land. And the word, now this is the word, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise. I don't think it was difficult to arise. I mean, when he did that crash landing, I mean, I think before God says arise, he was already running. (laughs) So Jonah arise and went unto Nineveh. So the people, verse 5, the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. Forgive me, I missed that thing on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the fish. And put on sackcloth from the greatest. I read too fast. And greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Hmm? Verse 9. And he says, Who can tell if God will turn, repent, turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not? Hold that scripture. Go to Joel again. Just two, three books back. Joel, I think it's 2 verse 14 or something. No, 2 verse 14, I'm right. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him? Are you with me? The same scripture. 
Verse 21, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Be not afraid, you wild beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness have sprung up and are green. The trees bear its fruit, and the fig tree and the vine yield the fruit. Be glad, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. He gives you form and let to rain. He comes down to you. Verse 24, and the threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vat shall overflow. I will restore, replace for you. Years that the locust has eaten and all that stuff. 26, you shall eat in plenty. You shall be satisfied. Mm. You shall never be put to shame. Mm. And I will pour out my spirit. Uh, uh. Matthew 12. Verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying, I hope you're going to get the message tonight. Saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeking for a sign, there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Okay. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say if you heard all the scriptures that I did in the beginning, then I want to give you this. As the Son of Man was three days, okay? So I'm bringing you Romans 8, verse 31. What shall we then say of these things? If God be for us. Now remember when we started with Micah and with Patrick's prayer and stuff like that. Who can be against us? Now here it comes. You must take it tonight. He who did not spare his own son. What I'm reading here. But gave him up for us all. Now here comes our message. How much more? Will he not freely with him give us? Are you not glad he didn't put a word in there? He just made it things. Are you glad he didn't put there sum or number? He just put it all. Now, you know the old psychological story, you know, the great definition for all. Just all. <laughs> John 10. Verse 9. And shall go in and out. <laughs> and find posture. Now, listen to the context. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Listen. Listen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Hmm? Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and lay down my life for the sheep. Hmm? Verse 17. Therefore does the Father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I of my Father. Now, if you don't know what I read tonight, it's the most awesome scriptures that you can maybe find. Jesus says, I'm going to lay down my life. You know that. We know the old story of the sheep. You know, there's like the fold with branches. 
and the sheep are all in here, you know, for lack of artistic abilities. Meh. Meh. Legs me and a boss lays us, no sheep. But. Boss lays sheep, okay? Okay. Sheep. Then the shepherd would go and lie down there. Lay down his life for the sheep. So nobody could come in to steal the sheep. He's got to go over the shepherd's life. So Jesus said, but I'm going to lay down. I'm going to die for the sheep. But I'm going to take up my life again so that they can go in and out. So I'm first going to close it, die, lay down my life. I'm going to take it up. And then I'm going to be the gate, the door. They're going to come in and out. They're going to find pasture. They're going to get all things. I'm going to lay it down. Now, here's the context. If God be for us, who can be against us? He spared not his own son, but gave him for us all. How much more will he not freely give us all things? Hmm? So there's the gap. Somebody's got to close the gap. You are standing here. You want to be here. Because this is where the promises are. But there's a gap. What is withholding you? What is that gap? Trouble. Stress. Call it what you will. Anxiety. Okay? Cares. Sickness. Disease. Poverty, lack, okay? Call it what you will, but tonight we put it down in one word. <laughs> trouble. Why? Because it troubles you. How do I know it? Because the way you think. It brings trouble. Is there anybody in the house? Hmm? So Jesus says, I'm going to close that gap. We read it tonight over and over. How's he going to close that gap? He's going to lay down his life. He's going to lay down his life for the sheep.